Friends and supporters gathered yesterday at the home of slain Toronto team Sami Yatim. The 18-year-old was shot and killed by police early Saturday on board a streetcar, but his family has reached out through a statement. We want to be clear that we do not hold any ill will against the thousands of police officers who work to protect us each day. This is tragedy for all involved. For a look at the legal road ahead for your team's family, we're joined now by lawyer Peter Rosenthal. He currently represents the family of Michael Elgin, a man shot dead by Toronto police last year. It's good to have you here. Thank you. I want to start with that statement read by the family friend and what you make of that and, and where and how the family might proceed from a legal standpoint. Well, the statement is very generous by the family, in my view, and I respect uh, their statement very much. And I offer my condolences to the family. What's going to be happening in this case, as in the many other unfortunate cases like this, the SIU will complete its investigation. They will determine whether or not to lay criminal charges against uh, the officer. That's their mandate. And then in any event, there'll be an inquest into the death at some point. And that's when the public will really learn great detail about what happened, probably. Undoubtedly, also, the family will consider at least suing the police, too. So there's a lot of legal stuff down the road. It'll take two, three years until all the legal things are wrapped up, maybe even more. Uh, which is interesting because you say that the family might even sue the police down the yeah. road. And yet, when you heard that statement, you called it generous. Tell me yeah. about that. It's interesting that you use that word generous. Well, I th many people would feel very bitter in their situation and they're being very generous in the way they're speaking about Toronto police officers. And I, I think it's, it's appropriate for them to have that attitude if they can. On the other hand, they might, as they learn more about it, they might get more critical of the structure that led to this killing. And they might not feel so generous after a while. Uh, let's talk about that because as you watch this case, it undoubtedly... Uh, has you thinking and drawing parallels uh, yes. to cases that you're working on now and have in the past. That's right. There have been, unfortunately, a number of such cases. All the cases where Toronto police officers have shot somebody have been where the person was a person in crisis. Not a bad guy who's killing people, but just a person in crisis, maybe with a knife. And there have been many inquests and many recommendations as to how to deal with such situations. And there's many good training scenarios that the police officers are taught. Does it come down to the training? The training is very good. If you look at the videos, you see that's the way to deal with people. But then when it comes to the street, to the actual event, it doesn't happen. So in this case, for example, it's clear from the videos, the police are shouting at this young man, drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife. Why didn't somebody use their training video model of trying to speak to that man, explain to him, say to him something like, excuse me, sir, you seem to have a problem. We're here to help you. Let's just cool it and take it easy here. If they spoke to him like that, instead of drop the knife, drop the knife, drop the knife, then who knows what the result would be. And also, they, it appears in this case, they surely shot this young man before there was any possible real danger to anyone. And uh, it's, it's another in a line of inappropriate police shootings contrary to the training. So the question is, what can we do about it, right? They have this, this... A, is this an opportunity for change? Well, the bin, unfortunately, we don't need so Another many opportunities. Opportunity. Yeah. We've had a number of opportunities, and all these inquests have made good recommendations, and the training looks good. So what's the solution? Well, two things, in my view, should be considered. One thing, the police have to really be policed. In other words, if a police officer really was punished, either criminally or as a discipline matter, for a case like this, that might shape up future behavior. And even if the criminal charges are not warranted in any particular case, they could certainly be disciplined for violating the training rules. Secondly, I, in my view, this calls into question, and people should seriously consider the question, should Toronto police officers carry firearms? Should ordinary police officers carry firearms? Look at who they've killed over the years. Not bad guys, people in crisis. If ordinary police officers didn't have firearms, they'd deal with it in a different way. And then occasionally, a firearm might be needed. There could be specially trained officers, emergency task force officers or others who do have firearms, like in Britain kind of model. 
maybe it's time to rethink the question of whether every cop on the beat should have a firearm on his hip, which he very occasionally will be in a situation where he might use and where he might use it very improperly and result in the killing of a young man. Fascinating discussion that we won't get to the <laughs> bottom of today, but, but thanks for getting it started.